Pyro, thanks very much for the host. I appreciate it. Clock Tower, thanks very much for the raid. I appreciate it. OBS, I'd appreciate it if you'd show the people a picture. There we go. Thank you, OBS. It's Monday Night XCOM, folks. I'm your host, Perfidious Pete. And tonight we're going out to see about the ballad of John. Well, I mean, okay, really, it's the ballad of Paladin. We're going full have gun, we'll travel. It's not. Except, you know, with the more liquor-fueled thing. It's John Bradford's card doesn't read, Have Gun, Will Travel. His card reads, Have Gin, Will XCOM. And we got gallons upon gallons of gin. Let's get the XCOM. John Bradford, Have Gin, Will XCOM, reads the card of a man. A drunk without liquor in a savage land. Who is Sophia Rojas, Daryl Rutherford, and Bao Zhang? I don't know these people, and more importantly, I don't want to know these people. I want to... Can we name... There's no custom... I'm telling you. The Ballad of John Bradford says Ballad better than the Ballad of Paladin. XCOM Monday. Hey, Candy Light, what's up? Grab your gin, grab your gun, it's time to get to work. You're right, I'm just salty that we're stuck with Rutherford, Rojas, and Zhang here. I'd really rather have... I'm, I had a plan for what we were going to do on this campaign, but you know what? I guess I'll just keep that one in my pocket for maybe a later campaign where we do our retro throwback thing. I had a whole theme worked out, but I couldn't figure out a way to get these people to not be our team. I'm pretty sure they're hard-coded to just be these guys. Except for Adford to be able to scrounge together the walking dead after the base fell. Well, I mean, those people were all resurrected from the DNA of history's greatest specimens. It was just, you know, John Bradford didn't do any of that. It was more Dr. Vollin than Bradford. We wanted Abraham Lincoln and Teddy in the bench to return. Hey, everybody loves Teddy in the bench, man. Let's get to work, though. Rutherford, Rojas, and Zang, we'll just, you know, we'll figure it out as we go. What are we going to play on? We can't play on Legend? Why not? You gotta be shitting me. Okay. Based on Central's recollection, things were never too easy or never too hard. We actually can't play on Legend. Alright, Iron Man. I mean, I don't care. Whatever. All right, Let's get to work. Which Chosen back. killed Teddy? It was, was the Assassin. Years ago, the so Chosen Assassin. She's actually the only Chosen I think we've ever That's lost a soldier to. No sign of any survivors from HQ. I had somehow fallen in with a... This is almost 20 years ago, so my memory might be a little hazy, because in those 20 years, I've had roughly 20,000 gallons of gin. Until one day we found a map. Probably literally 20,000 gallons. Who the fuck drew that? Bradford, obviously. You know how Bradford is with geography chat. He can't tell the difference between Mexico and Germany. He'd be like, our next mission's in Germany, and then he flies you to, like, Belize. You expect him to be much of a cartographer? The guy doesn't know the difference between the United Kingdom and Southeastern Asia. He once told us we had a mission in London, and he flew us to Africa. All right, then. Kill... Okay, so we get... Oh, this is a, so just a score mission. So, soldiers killed loses 5,000 points. Getting somebody wounded loses 1,000 points. We complete the objective. We get 10K. Get killing 12,000. Good luck, Commander. Early bird bonus is granted for scoring objectives early. I'm not going to go for the early bird bonus. That seems a little like a sucker's bet. And also, is it just me or do the... Does the, do the graphics seem a little grainy, chat? I was having some problems with one of my monitors earlier. My main monitor, for some reason, like, wouldn't register. I had to get around and fiddle with it a little bit. How's it look on your end, Chad? Does, it, does, does, does the stream look okay? Right, we're just gonna, we're gonna approach carefully. You know, going to the rooftop might be a good idea. Let's see who we've got first. So, Bao Zhang, you're a sniper. All right, Ruth, Rutherford, you are a grenadier. A little grainy graphics are fine a little grainy or lower resolution let's you know let's take a look because it looks it looks a little off to me as well uh, i mean no it's full resolution so I, xcom doesn't exactly have a whole lot of everything's at maximum 
Hmm. I don't know. It does look a little off, though. Like, that's the first thing I noticed is that it looked a little... It looked a little wonky. They downed the graphics to get halfway to... So this is a stylistic choice. I suppose that, that would explain it, then. Trying out the new soundtrack and the audio options. Good call. Sold. Let's do it. Audio options. The new soundtrack is... Let's get rid of War of the Chosen, and we're going to use what? UFO Defense? That's the original game soundtrack. That one sucked. Let's go to Enemy Unknown. Your video card's trying to default settings in the G4 settings on some shit? I don't think so, no. I mean, it, it, it was working fine earlier, and the it didn't look like this when I was on the loading screen either. UFO Defense one is a remaster. They redid it. It's real good. Okay. All right. I will take your advice, chat. We'll try it. So it's a remaster of the original. Because the original soundtrack was shit. So you've got an old world assault rifle. What are your abilities? Like We got to know what everybody can do. Aid protocol. So you're a specialist. Got it. Stabilize, heal, med kit, gun. John, Gin Boy, Bradford, what do you got working, Brad? Maybe it's just this texture that looks rough because it's this concrete. It might just be the texture. Because now that I'm coming out here, this stuff looks okay. I think it's just like our uniforms against this particular texture that seems a little dicked up. The rest of it looks okay. How did you play the original? I couldn't even figure out how to shoot. Well, I mean, it was back in the day when video games were all Nintendo hard. So we got Daryl Rusty Rutherford. You are a grenadier. Sparrow's a specialist. John, bad boy, gin boy Bradford. What the hell's a scatter gun? So it's a shotgun with a laser sight. Peacock, you got a late. Why does everybody have a laser sight? So we got a, uh, we got one of everything. One of all the base classes. Sniper, specialist. We got a Bradford. Heading there now. Let's head up to this rooftop. And we're going to slow play a little bit, so I'm comfortable with just, like, overwatching a little here. We'll get the high ground on the rooftop, see if we can get an audio clue from where the enemies are. And then once we find them, we'll send Bradford to hunt them down. And mercilessly slaughter them. I predict Bradford's going to be coming off of this rooftop and chopping a dude in half with that sword. It's going to be a rooftop katana. We're going to go full anime on him. It's going to be looking like Ninja Scroll up in here. Although, you know, maybe you should try and not look like Ninja Scroll because that's a shitty anime. Well, we found ourselves a faceless and overwatched him for four. That's disappointing. Over here, boys. I got more overwatch if y'all want to come get a piece. Hey, guys, they're over there. Yep, we are. Get snipe. Nope, pistol. Nice shot. Oh, hey, thanks for making it easy on us. Also, thanks for getting overwatched a bunch. Well, I see you're drunker than normal, Bradford. Nice work, by the way. So much for that overwatch. Well, then. So, Rusty, can you get a grenade on this sectoid? Can you launch one out that far? Nope. I'm just about giving up on everyone. By the uh, I'm just about giving up on you, John. So, Sophia Rojas, 85%. You can't even see the sectoid. You also don't have cover. Bradford? Not going to get a kill. Bradford has a regular grenade. We could have Bradford come over here. What's your, what's your sword going to do on a regular swing? Five to seven, so we get more out of the sword. I kind of don't want to give up my rooftop position, though. You cannot fire twice, Bao Zhang. So what if we do this? We hit the faceless with the grenade, drop him through the floor, get some free damage, and then maybe we have Bradford go full anime mode and jump down on his brain. 
Baozing is our sniper, though. If anybody's going to be able to get a decent shot at that sectoid, it's her. Rusty, if we just have you open up, you've got a non-zero chance of just flat-out killing that guy. I hate the fact that we're in low cover. Could we then just shoot this dude to pieces? Like, probably. Okay, Rusty, let's see if you could pick this dude off. 98% to hit. That's my boy! Turns out he's not Rusty at all. That was the, nick the, the, the nickname Rusty. It's one of those ironic nicknames. They call him Rusty. You'd be like, oh, you know, he's not very good at his job. He's not Rusty at all. He's sharp as a tack. The man is on point. Nice. Five damage from our specialist. All right, Jin boy, you think you can come stick a shotgun in this dude's mouth? You have what it takes? Uh, well, it can't miss. It could fail to kill him. It didn't, though. John turned him into some silly putty. More points for us. Peacock, what are your chances here with a little bit of uh, long ball overwatch? You know what? It's not going to kill him either way. I think we take the chance. He's just going to throw a psychic attack at us anyway, and it's not going to matter because we'll just kill him. We'll take our four damage. See how he responds. What you got, Mr. Sectoid? What's your plan? What's your game there? I don't Going to hide behind the car, huh? That's actually not a very good plan. All right, Peacock. Bradford's always waking up in a smoking pile of something. We could just drop a grenade on that car and definitively kill that man. The question is, do we want to waste a grenade? And I kind of feel like the answer is no. Let's see what Rojas can do. Can you pick him off, Rojas? 82%. She's going to get him. She got him. Nice shot. That's my girl right there. All right, Bradford, let's get you up here. I'm thinking... Bradford only has two bullets left. I'd like to have some Overwatch up here. Let's go ahead and get reloads out of the way. Uh, sniper lady, you're just going to double move. Don't spawn a pod, though. I'll be furious. Thank you for sparing me my fury. And Dirty Daryl Rutherford here is down to his final bullet. I had hoped someone would walk into our Overwatch, and they didn't. Unfortunately, the aliens didn't give us a whole lot of time to look well, around. Now, everybody reload and go on Overwatch here. We're gonna we're slow playing it. We got no turn timer here. We're gonna take advantage of the clock. I know we get bonus points for finishing early, but I'd also rather finish without anybody getting wounded. Like we're getting way less early road points than we stand to lose if somebody gets hurt. So that Viper needs to die. If you guys could take cover next to something that is readily explodable, that would be extraordinarily helpful. All right, so Bao Zhang, I'm thinking you just go ahead and drop a grenade on this Viper and hopefully blow up this vehicle as well. You did not get the car. Kind of wanted that to explode, I'm not going to lie. All right, Rusty Shackelford. Let's get you out there. Rutherford B. Hayes is who we got now. Daryl B. Rutherford. We can get both Faceless and potentially the vehicle. Still didn't get the car. These cars are proving themselves to be remarkably indestructible. So what can we see? You can't get a shot if we go that way. Where can you get a shot from? We could put you here and be in full cover, and you could only see one target. I don't know which target it is, though, and that's bad. Bradford would have a shot at that guy with the shotgun. We're not going to get that dude whatsoever. We have no chance there. We could almost certainly kill the Viper, but we'd have to go stand next to an exploding car, and that seems like an extraordinarily bad idea. Alternatively, we could just have Bradford step up and throw a grenade at the car. Ooh. 
Rojas does not have a grenade. I got greedy with the car. If that car had exploded, we'd be in fine shape. But since the car has not exploded, we're actually not in particularly good shape as a result. We got to get that other... We got to get that other Viper. Like, dis we definitively need to get that guy. With the full activation move, those faceless can almost certainly come hit us. The right move would be actually to fall back. But... They can jump, so one of them's just going to leap up onto this rooftop. All right, Bradford, get over here. We can kill one, and this car, the grenade probably won't kill him, but the car would definitely explode. If I'm only going to kill one, though, I'd rather kill the Viper. Viper, surprisingly, the actually the more dangerous opponent. And then we could have you come down here and maybe take a shot. We can't really cluster our guys up because these uh, Faceless do have an AoE attack, so we got to be a little careful of that. All right, Specialist Lady, what do you got? I mean, you got a 79% chance to not get a kill. Take it. We're not going to do better on Overwatch. She was close. Max damage. Didn't quite get us there. Yeah, this is what we were worried about. He jumped to the roof but missed. Oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. Oh, good. Critical and insta-killed. And then he dropped himself through a floor. Well, that was lucky that we got insta-gibbed. I'm super happy about the way this one has turned out. Perfect. So this is going supremely well because... And John Bradford. Well, I mean, he's unconscious, but it has nothing to do with the injury or the fall. Here's my question. Why do Faceless swinging their fists destroy the floor? Just out of curiosity, why is that making the floor explode? Because, you know, had I known that, I would never have come up onto this rooftop. Because now this guy is almost certainly going to get killed as well. Like, this is... This is... Perfect. We're actually going to get squad wiped here. Well, maybe he'll drop his buddy through the floor. I mean, this guy's dead because this roof is a death trap given that these guys collapse the roof. Yeah, it's going fantastically. Daryl Rutherford, by the way, had that swipe attack not destroyed the floor would have been fine. So these guys are one-shot kill artists? Perfect. I mean, that went amazingly well. Uh, well, I have to agree we probably would have done better. Why do Faceless Swinging destroy the floor? Yeah, we're going to exit to the main menu. Don't really remember Faceless being that good. Let's uh, try this again. I don't want to continue the operation, though. I'd like to just start over. Hey, Pete, you dead. Yeah, that's clearly because the Faceless swipes destroying the floor is... Uh, excuse me? What's this shit? Uh, just restart, please. All right, people. Story time. This was almost 20 years ago, so my memory might be a little hazy. Well, so, little salty about that start. That was, uh, 
kind of bullshit there. I mean, things went really well until we, we got collapsed the on the rooftop. Until one day we found a map. A map claiming to point towards a human sanctuary. So immediately I go back to the rooftop, of course, by the way. Still out there. We were suspicious, of course. But we didn't really have... The initial part of our plan went fine. Like, it went very, very well. We did fine at first. Abandon run and restart. How do you abandon the run? Can we do that? Because I'd really like to just how do we how do we abandon the run? Generate new resistance operation. Is that what this does? Ah, there we go. Nope. How do we Go back to the main legacy menu. There's an option for abandoning your run. Okay. Here? Or are we talking like at the legacy? Because we're at the legacy hub. I don't see an option to abandon the run, chat. Blast from the past. Ah, abandon progress. That's what we want. All right. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. We get another look at Bradford's handiwork here. Ago, so my might be a hazy. Your map was a little hazy well, too, John. Did you draw that in crayon after a fifth of gin? So we're going to try this a little bit different. Hey, Pete, you suck. Well, I mean, I don't claim to be really, really good at XCOM or anything. Still a little salty about the fact that the faceless swinging destroyed the floor. That doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. It also destroyed the tile they were standing in every single time. The other part of that that didn't make sense. Of course, but we didn't really have much else to lose. Okay, so we're gonna get some Overwatch. Let's hope we do a little better this time than we did last time. Maybe get to play this a little different. Goes right back to the roof. Our initial engagement of this pod was fine, chat. I had no problem with what happened until these guys got onto the roof and started swinging at us. Our goal here is gonna be to just not let them get on the roof, or at least not get on the roof alive. You missed that last time too, Rojas. We're doing some live, die, live again. This is Edge of Oblivion shit right here. Still whiffed it. What is this, scripted? We gotta... Are we getting the exact same rolls as well? Is the roll table also scripted? So like if he one-shot kills this guy... Apparently, the rolls aren't randomized either. Huh. That's very strange. Also, uh, I don't want to call, you know, fire too many shots there, XCOM, but the transparent floor is a little off putting. Up on the rooftop, click, click, click. So, Rojas, I think we just have you come up here and shoot. Well, so far, everything has gone exactly the same as it has on our last run. Come to the roof and shoot. You do five damage, and then Bradford steps up here, shotguns that man. He does five damage. I could use the exercise. John, you're, well, you know what? You say that, but you are looking a little doughy around the middle, buddy. We are even getting the exact same damage rolls, chat. Like, nothing has been different at all. This shot will miss, then? No, that time it hit. So, we're just getting some startling coincidences? Last time this guy came down and hid behind this car. And he did exactly that same thing again. Especially how I made it out of the base back then. Alright. Sparrow? You should be able to come over here and shoot this sectoid in the brain and kill him. It was a lot of dark, bitter days in between. Yep. Exactly the same way as it went before. I'm very curious about the overall randomness we're getting here and that our overall randomness doesn't seem at all overall random. So let's get... 
Well, we're not going to do what we did last time at all. That's objectively a bad idea. We still want to take a turn and collect ourselves. Let's let everybody reload and whatnot. Because we're not going to fight a pod of two faceless from a rooftop. Especially given the fact that we literally don't have enough damage to kill two faceless in a single turn unless we can catch them in a car explosion or something. Like, we can't kill them. We don't have enough damage. It might be better, as strange as it may sound, to leave the Viper. We might be better letting the Viper be and fighting something else. You're going to be on Overwatch. Taking cover behind a gas pump doesn't seem like a startlingly great idea either, especially considering the Faceless can explode those with their fists as well. Watching Faceless Punch stuff is like watching Iron Fist on Netflix, except, you know, good. Hundred hour work week should not be a thing with O dot O T. Ah, the dev team didn't spend a hundred hour weeks working. That's yeah, I don't the the whole crunch thing for Red Dead. That's just usury. And this is coming from a guy who routinely works ridiculously long weeks. So I kind of feel like I'm speaking from experience a little bit on this one. Here we go. If these guys wander into some Overwatch, now we got a shot at them. I mean, for one, a literal shot, and two. Iron Fist got cancelled. Is anybody actually surprised by that? It was terrible. No, John, I mean, you were gonna... That, that, I can't believe you missed that from 10,000 miles away with a shotgun. How did that... How did that miss? I just don't understand it. Okay, Bradford, can you one-shot the Viper? No, you cannot one-shot the Viper. So, Rusty, you're not going to set... You're not going to be able to detonate that car. You're just not. It's not going to go. So what we have to do is kill the Faceless, and then at the end of that, still be in respectable cover. What kind of shot have you got? A 79 percenter, which ain't great. You are far enough away that that man won't be able to hit you, though. So this feels like a situation where we should probably play it cautious. Baozang. You got a 65 percenter with that pistol. What can you give me with the Granado? Can you get it on target? Nope. We may have you go on Overwatch then. Rusty? 71% isn't fantastic. We're going to need you in cover at the end of the turn, but also farther away from the enemy, and you can't make it. Could we potentially kill that guy then? Let's see. Okay, maybe we can just kill him. If we can get a hit here and hit for reasonable damage. Nope, we shot the wall. So she's not going to be able to get him, and there's no way Bradford finishes him off. Bradford's going to need to move. We're going to take some damage here. Almost certainly. Are we far enough away that he can't get to us in a single move? We should be. And we can't even see the Viper, so the Viper's going to have to move. This guy also can't see the Viper. Bradford, can you see the Viper? Bradford can, so John needs to fall back a little bit or change position. The problem we're going to have is none of these guys can get to... Can this Faceless get to us in a single move? No. He's in double move territory as well. Well, with his melee reach, he actually might be able to get to us. We're going to fall back just a scooch. Let's see if we can draw him into the gas pumps. We cracked that man for four. And then Bradford, man, I really wish you could get to cover, buddy. We could have Bradford hunker. Our better bet might be, I'm very worried that the Vipers get advanced and spit acid on three people. And when I say very worried, I mean I'm basically certain that that's exactly what he's going to do. Great shot, John. No, I mean, you probably won't, though. I'm 
Good shot. Credit from Bao Zhang, chat. Yeah, we're gonna eat. We're eating acid. Okay. You will not be able to swing, though. That was a double move. You don't get a swing. You also don't get a swing, sir. It's also a double move. You don't get a swing either. In the early days, the faceless weren't even disguised half the time. And there were all kinds of silly Yeah, we're going to lose some points here. We knew the acid was coming. There was nothing we could do to stop it. Okay, Bradford, you got to go kill that viper, which you should be able to do now, assuming you can get there. Oh, good. Bradford is short. Perfect. Well, we might be able to detonate that gas pump. Bao Zing is going to have trouble getting it on target. Everybody needs to get away from the vehicle. You're immune to the poison thanks to your med kit. I really wish you had a regular grenade. We got five damage out of you. We're going to have to go a little high risk, high reward here. Like, no, we're not going to be able to get that guy. Well, maybe. If we can get them both down into grenade territory, we can just cook them up with a grenade. John, step over here. I know you're going to have a slight aim penalty, but you're also shooting... Well, basically point blank with a shotgun. Watch him miss. Unfucking believable Yeah, you can't really hit shit, can you, John? Our goal was to have Bradford wound that man and then drop a frag grenade on them so that we could get two kills, but we're probably not going to be able to do that. We'll get one and we can hurt a guy. And now Bao Zhang has to come up with big damage to finish this dude off or we're going to lose a soldier. Don't fuck me on this, Zhang. We already kind of got screwed. Perfect. Well, somebody's going to be dead then. Possibly two somebodies. You know, that missed, but I don't even care because it doesn't matter. When this car explodes, Bradford's going to die. We had to make do with whatever weapons we could scrounge up. We didn't know a whole lot about the alien tech back then. Yeah, we didn't know a whole lot about the alien. Yeah, let's not explode the vehicle while we're standing right next to it. This is actually going terribly. We're getting not fantastic luck. Stop shooting the fucking tank and kill the faceless. If you lose a soldier in this mode, he magically comes back to life in the next mission. Yeah, well, we're going to get like zero points on this, though. These faceless are just overwhelming. And it's not the damage they do. It's the fact that they have unlimited cover destruction, which is killing our soldiers. The faceless didn't do shit. It was all collateral damage. I'm tempted to abandon this. You know what? I, in fact, this is not going well. I'm not pleased at all. Since when have video games been about points? I'm very salty about this. I, I, we will no. We're, we're gonna get this correct. I'm not happy about having ghetto troopers. We're still playing on Nightmare. I'm not happy about having ghetto troopers right, up against Sorry, pods man. that are relatively powerful when we still have ago, shitty starting weapons. Might be a little hazy. With XCOM gone and no sign of any survivors. I'm very upset. HQ, I had somehow fallen in with a couple of other misfits. The yeah, keep fallen fallen in with the misfits, John. But misfits are where you belong. Just putting that out there. Until one day we found a map. A map claiming to point towards a human sanctuary. A gathering place for those of us still out there. Very we salty. Okay, this is it. We got we got this run. I'm really I'm feeling confident now. We now have a plan. 
Our plan is going to be kill this first pod, and once it's dead, we're just gonna fall back and refuse to engage the enemy whatsoever until we can lure them into those gas pumps and blow them up. Because the gas pumps are the only thing we've got that can do enough damage to a faceless. Our maximum damage output on a single turn is what, like 21? I think is the most damage we can do in a single turn. And we're looking at way more than that in health. With these faceless, we're looking at like 28 points of health in every pod. So we're never going to be able to kill them on our own action turn. We just, we can't do it. We don't have the soup. How is this guy utterly unhittable? In every scenario, this guy cannot be killed by mortal weapons. It feels like the roll table is also scripted. Like this shot will hit and kill him. So that's, that's actually exactly it then. The roll table is just also scripted. You have scripted roles. I don't like that at all, actually. I understand since it's like a score-based thing and you're theoretically supposed to be like facing off against other people to see what it is. But I don't I don't like scripted roles. That it takes all of the excitement. And it, you know what scripted roles really do? They kind of kill the replayability. Cause we're getting exactly the same roles for both hits and damages here. Like, this shot will hit for, what did it hit for last time? Six? Yeah, so this is 100% scripted then. The Saw King is back. Well, the mechanics of this are different than the mechanics of XCOM 2 a little bit, based on the fact that we have scripted roles. But now that we know that, we can adjust accordingly. Well, John, come on, let's face it. It's not the first time you've been crawling around in a gutter. So here's what we're going to do. Since we know what kind of roles we have waiting for us on the roll table and what to expect from the enemies, we're just going to fall back in Overwatch then. Like, we know where the enemy pod is. What we could do is try and go crack that pod, get them to come at us. And then once they're activated, try and draw them back into Overwatch, or try and draw them back into these gas pumps, which is where we want to fight them. We want to engage the enemy by these gas pumps. So the rest of the team is just on Overwatch then. So we could send somebody in to pop the pod and then fall back. Okay, so Peacock, you're... No, don't call it a Sky Ranger. You're on Overwatch. Rusty? We're going to move you up to here and have you Overwatch. I mean, we know where... The, we have the advantage of knowing where this pod is and where they're going to come from. Just chill here in Overwatch, Bradford. In the early days, the faceless weren't even disguised at the time. And there were all kinds of silly ass rumors about So these guys are not going to come for us. All kinds of things. Okay. Well, we know where they're at, so it doesn't matter whether they come for us or not. We had to make do with whatever weapons we could scrounge up. We didn't know a whole lot about the alien tech back then. I figured if we actually found anything XCOM built, at least I could count on it being pointed at the Oh, that universe. sucks. We activated them and did not want to. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, take that Overwatch shot. That's going to save you. Apparently you have a stock because that missed, but still generated a hit, huh? Well, Rojas, if you don't run, you will die. In fact, even if you run, you may still die. We'd like to get Bradford in a position where maybe he could get a little shotgun overwatch going. Like shotgun overwatch that has a chance to hit the enemy. Or, you know, I'm not taking a shot on his turn because he'll just heal it. Overwatch is better here. 
Same thing here. There's no reason we should overwatch. They regenerate before they take other actions. Yeah, you're dead then. If this pod won't move and we have to rumble into it, I don't understand how we're... Yeah, take that shot, John. Good one. Smart targeting decision. You didn't want to wait for that other guy that you maybe could have hit to move. Nice work from Sophia, though. It's scripted because it's just Bradford talking about the same shit over and over and over. If this guy gets to swing, we're dead. He's just going to point menacingly. Oh, he's double moving. Okay, so we have one next to a gas pump. That's Rusty's boy right there. That's a Rusty boy. Speaking of Rusty boys, Rusty boy, you got to get out of here so you can make the Rusty boy happen. Sparrow, you got to fall back. I don't want you in a position where you can get hit by that Viper. Like, you can't be next to this dude. We can't have two people adjacent. Because we'll get poisoned. If anybody's going to get poisoned, we want it to be Rojas. Okay, you can kill that guy. But we should be able to take this boy out with the gas pump. Not you, Bao Zhang. We got other plans for you. Rusty, you should be able to gas pump this boy. Somehow he only took three damage from that, huh? Okay. Well, you should be able to pick that dude off. Thanks to your clever Overwatch. And then we have two shooters who have to do the last seven damage to that man. Sparrow, 89%. Do it to it. Okay, Bradford. Now, if you could just... Like, not completely fuck us by missing here. You know, 89% is pretty good. Alternatively, this car already exploded. So, why don't you come here to this full cover and just give this man a little point-blank shotgun to the old mouth there. 89% is pretty good, but you know what? 100% is not failable. Give me my points. Viper's falling back, huh? John Bradford has an overwhelming, crippling fear of open flame because he is soaked at all times in an unbelievable amount of gin and he's worried that he might simply burst into flame. You can't really fault John for being afraid of fire. It's a legitimate fear. His sweat is like 80 proof. John Gin Boy Bradford, 80 proof sweat. He's got to be careful. Actually, Pete, it's scripted because Bradford is just trying to perfect the story that he's telling. It's as good an explanation as any. Bradford, we'd kind of like to keep you close because ideally you're going to go be our spotter. Come up here and hunker. So there's still at least one more pod, and we know that it's in that direction because the alien wouldn't have fallen back if they weren't falling back towards the front. So we're going to take very incremental forward movements here. Like, we're going to play this one super duper cautious. That tile is on fire. Don't stand in that tile, Rusty. You only have one health. If you set yourself on fire, you're done. This is some classic XCOM Overwatch creeping we got working right here. Already gone. This is what we call it a classic yeah. creeper. Rusty, need a little more classic creeping. I'd say it's dangerous for you to take cover next to a gas pump, but at one health, it's kind of not. I really want you up on top of this roof, but I really also want you to not create a pod, and I'm worried that this might. The last thing we want to do is spawn a pod deep in the turn where we don't have enough actions to react. 
Like, if we're gonna spawn a pod, we have to do it with our first action. Bradford's gonna be making too much noise in his Overwatch creep, what with all the burping. Headed there now. Okay, let's see if we can get back onto this rooftop. Still no eyes on the enemy. That That's a good thing. Okay, Bradford, you know what? You reload. And just move to here. My rusty trombone. Let's get you over here. And also reload. If we're going to go in and engage, we want to make sure everybody has, like, the fullest clips possible. We'll take a turn to reload here. Legacy mode, yeah, we can't name our troopers in legacy mode. In fact, we've it's it it's apparently just flat out straight up scripted. The names of these soldiers are fixed. Cuz it's not just you get random soldier, it's you get these particular soldiers. Barrow. Hey, uh how come she doesn't speak English? The other two soldiers speak English, but Rojas does not. It's cool that she's repping her cultural heritage. I mean, I, I, I have respect for that. I'm going. It just seems like from a teamwork perspective, maybe speaking in a language that the rest of the team speaks would be helpful. Then again, you know what? Maybe I'm being a little uh, ethnocentric here. Maybe I'm being a little culturally narrow-minded. Maybe Bradford, Rutherford, and Zhang speak Spanish. Maybe she is speaking in a language that the rest of the team understands because they are also, you know, they're also bilingual. Scanning. En guardia chat. That means on guard, by the way. Two vipers and a sectoid. Come on out here where we can... Yeah, exactly. Eat a little rooftop overwatch, my friends. I mean, that was some fucking ace shooting, guys. That's... That's fantastic work right there. Just brilliant performance. Unbelievable output. That's... That's fucking brilliant okay bradford all i want you to do for now is just move I'm out of here. we'll have you finish a turn here in a second probably by meleeing that sectoid because you can one shot kill him he's vulnerable to melee damage rusty shackleford i need you to vaporize this you know you're not going to get the car though we've already seen how this plays out and it plays out with a not a dead viper because it doesn't do enough damage then again, his 56% chance to hit probably ain't going to get the job done either. So let's just do this. Vaporize all the cover and damage both targets. At the end of this, just we have to be aware that we're going to have a Viper. Who is, or are we? Because Peacock could throw a Granado at him. Although she does have a flank shot. It can't kill him, even if it hits. Sparrow, you don't have a grenade, do you? Nope. What are your chances of just straight up killing this dude? Not good. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Take this shot. Perfect. Bradford, we'll get back to you in a second. Peacock? No, same shot, actually. You're dead. We've done it. And then we could go for the melee hit, except we're not gonna. Instead, we're gonna have Bradford shotgun this Viper. We leave the sectoid in the open. He's gonna break for cover. 75% though is not good. You know what? Frag him. We got a 50-50 shot here of the kill. Well, we didn't do it, but the car finished him off. Still counts. Still counts, chat. She doesn't need to speak English. The rest of the team should speak Spanish to accommodate her. That was extraordinarily lucky. All right, we're going to play. We're still playing it cautious here. 
Anybody got a grenade left? Nope. Peacock does. Can you throw? You know what? She can't throw one this far. Okay. But she can move up. That sniper rifle's not doing us any good. Frag this sectoid. We'd have to restart again. We're figuring things out. We weren't accustomed to the fact that this whole mission is scripted. Now that I'm on board with how it's going to work, I, I realize we need to adjust our play style a little bit. Didn't expect it to be scripted. There we go. All right. We made it out. It didn't really go that well, though, John. In fact, it went kind of fucking awful. Our first stop yielded a few decent upgrades, but nothing that was going to set the world on fire. And there was only so much we could take with us. We had to travel light. Check out this soundtrack. It's got that 80s kind of aggressive, really crunchy guitar. Like, this could be the soundtrack to any montage in any Rocky movie. This is our training montage. This mission was our training montage, and they're giving us montage music. Dun, 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 dun. Some guy with an oddly high-pitched voice is going to come out to us, and he's be like, We're the best around! Alternatively, this could be the soundtrack to the 80s Transformers movie, the animated one. So this is an absolute no-brainer. We take... I mean, I really wish the Mimic Beacon wasn't on my Ranger. Replace the Frag Grenade with a Proximity Mine. Sharpshooter gains a Battle Scanner. Specials gets a Skulljack. Skulljack's super useful. Yeah, I mean, we definitely want the utility items. They're way better. Oh, okay. Well, this game's going to be vastly different. Blade, Bradford has Blade Storm now. Bao Zhang got long watch. Uh, medical protocol for you and Rutherford got Shredder. We also got Veronica Reyes, who is herself. So wait, she's a classic grenadier, but Rutherford is also a grenadier. She has launch grenade and Shredder. Also grenadier field. Okay. I'm telling you. I'm just waiting for Hot Rod to pop open the All Spark or the Matrix of Leadership or whatever the hell it was and become Rodimus Prime because, you know, that's not a porn star name. They used to call me Hot Rod, but now they call me Rodimus Prime. 